This video comes from Paint Coach, the title, 10 Tips to Bring Your Portrait Paintings to Life. I'm very curious to see what Paint Coach has to offer here. He offers some really great tips and I have some tips as well. So we'll see what he says, see if we can learn anything and then I'll add a few things to that. All right, first tip, before we even get into painting, let's talk about the photo reference because you can make things a lot harder or easier based on the photo you choose. Don't use a photo, that's my advice. Number one, number one on the list here. Paint from life, get a nice direct light source. Get that light source the same on your model as it is on your painting and get in a good distance from them, about you know five to seven feet, something like that. And then you're gonna be able to actually see what's important. So forget about the photo reference, don't use a photo reference. Get a live model with good lighting. That's gonna make life easy for you. All right, tip number two, in portraits, try to avoid lines. I mean, you don't really want to paint in lines. You want to create lines by putting the right value of shapes next to each other. Exactly. That's that's a great tip right there. You don't want to just outline things and, and draw it uh, with a bunch of lines or create sharp outlines. That's going to trap the forms and, and put them too sharply into place. It's going to look, I don't know, I guess cartoonish. And the problem with doing that is that you don't actually see that in reality. In reality, there's not all these lines defining things. You just have everything kind of uh, blending together in a way, except for in your very crucial areas like the eyes, nose, and mouth. Those are the only areas you're going to get these higher contrast and more clear separations. So instead, like you said, just put them next to each other. If you have the appropriate value and the appropriate color, it's only going to take just a little, little tiny bit of difference in order to create separation of different forms. Tip number three is understand the planes of the face. Understanding this is gonna completely change how you look at portrait painting. Photos leave out so much information. I mean, just looking at a two-dimensional photograph, not a three-dimensional head, real life, the form of it isn't going to be as clear. And knowing these planes is gonna help you see more and help you better construct the form of the face. Yeah, so again, this is just on the terms of simplifying. How can you put things into place in a very simple way and get that underlying structure? And the truth is that that is going to give you the most likeness. I know it sounds very funny, and a lot of people are tempted to do the exact opposite, but actually getting the broader shapes in place is going to make a much bigger impact on your ability to capture the model's likeness compared to getting little tiny details and you know perfectly developing the eye, for example. That's not going to do very much in the big scheme of things if these bigger structures are not in place properly. So my recommendation is always use bigger brushes, use big broad brushes, put things in place with confidence and try to get these really big shapes in place. And that's going to absolutely be crucial for getting a good likeness. I have a video series talking about exactly this on my Patreon. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out. Now, this next tip is linked to the previous tip which is be mindful of the direction of your brush strokes. That's, that's an interesting tip, yeah. That can make a really big difference. I have a video about that here on my YouTube channel. And the important thing to consider here is just, it's going to reflect light in a different way. So the thing I always teach for everybody starting out is that you should have at least two brush strokes in your toolbox. One is going to be reflective, it's going to actually bring light onto the surface and reflect it back to the viewer. So it's going to increase the amount of light, but just based on the brush stroke alone, and that's going to be building impasto. The other brush stroke is going to be a very thin, soft brush stroke that's not going to really reflect the light. So it's just going to be opaque. It's going to appear exactly how you put it down. And that's going to be in the exact opposite direction. You're going to put down really soft, maybe even with a little bit of medium to make sure it goes on smooth. And that's going to be a very direct way of painting. So those two together, if you just do those, you're gonna be able to get a lot of depth in your painting. You're gonna have brush marks that are going to really stand out and other ones that are really gonna settle back. Next tip is do your best to try and think and draw in 3D. 
not 2D. What I mean is that we can get really caught up in trying to accurately draw something two-dimensionally, meaning just the base outline and shape of that thing, when we should be thinking about what it looks like three-dimensionally. Yeah, this is a really good point. This is something uh, I still struggle with this, actually, and it's, it's a very difficult concept to grasp, but there is a roundness and a three-dimensional form to the face and to your subject. So you need to consider that while you are you know, actually making your remarks. Somebody who I think does this extremely well, of course, is the master himself, Odd Nerdrum. I've seen in his works, uh, there, there's a certain three-dimensionality that is, that is really, really difficult to grasp. And even at times, he will put things in place just because he knows that it's going to add that three-dimensionality, even though it's not there in reality. So sometimes he will manipulate things. He will see something and kind of exaggerate it just to really give us that sense of the form and to make it feel more three-dimensional, even though it doesn't look like that. So this is a very important concept. One of the things I'm always preaching about is to find the egg. The head it has a sort of egg shape. It's got a roundness to it. So it's not just, you know, flat and, and two-dimensional, but there's actually a ovular shape to it that goes around and feels like you can actually move in space. All right, tip number seven is look for soft edges with hair. And as students, everywhere there's hair, the edge is very harsh and crisp. And if they would have softened a lot of those edges, it would read more as hair. Yeah, so that's true for anything that really has a soft appearance or that has a textural appearance. You want to imitate the texture. Hair, generally, you're going to have to simplify to a very, very large degree. You know, there's a lot of painters out there who will go so hyper-realistically detailed that they're going to use a single hair to paint each individual hair. And the thing is that you're just wasting time. You're going to spend a lot of time on that. You're going to get a sharp finish, but then it's not going to look good on the big scale because you haven't gotten that overall form and sense of uh, softness in that broader sense. So my advice is to look for a very simplified way to approach it. Try to simplify the shapes. There's usually only going to be a handful of colors that you're actually going to find. For example, with my hair, you're going to get you know some of these highlight colors. There's going to be a base mid-tone color, which is more in that kind of warm range. And then you're going to have some of these shadows, which are going to be darker. And just with those three, you can really, really accomplish a lot. So try to simplify, put down your marks with bold intention, be very confident about it. I mean, just, just put it down. As soon as you see that color on your model, put it down on your canvas immediately. Don't even think about it. And as you start to develop, if you just, if you just put things in place really quickly, you're actually gonna get a greater sense of the form compared to trying to find every single individual hair. This is the way you should approach pretty much anything that you're painting. You should be moving quickly and trying to find that, that greater sense, the general sense of the form. And that's going to do a lot more for you than just finding the details. Tip number nine is something I wish I would have learned long ago, which is paint the eyes softer. You know, you don't want to outline the eye at any point. Like a lot of people think they have to, you know, draw the eye and then paint it in. Really try to build the eyes you paint. Yeah, that's that's very true. That's a good point. A lot of times people will struggle and they'll make it look, uh, I don't know, kind of like these, these Egyptian uh, tombs where you have like uh, this very stylized like outline of the eye. But you're actually much better off just treating all the features pretty much the same. Just approach it like it's part of the form. Look for the mid-tones and try to slowly build it up based on the actual structure rather than you know getting stuck in the lines and getting stuck in the details. So usually the way I approach the eyes is to look for the bigger shapes first. I look at the entire eye socket and see how that fits within the entire shape of the head. And then I'll start to work into that slowly, refining as I go. And I'll find how does the eye fit within the eye socket and then how do each of these individual parts of the eye fit within that shape. So you definitely don't need everything outlined and it doesn't need to be perfectly detailed to start getting likeness and to make it feel very compelling. So there you go. There's 10 tips to bring your portrait to life. Thank you, Paint Coach, for the video. To me, the most important thing is to simplify and be confident and bold. 
use some big brushes, get the big shapes, and that's really going to do the most for you. So if you're looking for advice, that's my advice. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, feel free to leave it in the comments. Let me know if there's another video you'd like me to react to. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.